The marriage of Google and YouTube, now that's a scary thing because you can literally put anything into your Google source and then get as many images or video that happens to be on the internet that relates to that subject. So, as an artist, that's like being in a candy store. So what do I think about all that now that I have access? I'm wondering, you know, what does all of this mean? Is it good that it's on, uh, on uh, YouTube or Vimeo and one can just download it and take it and use it however they want without any context or any history or any knowledge or even knowing who made it? Now, if you're playing the movie on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. I've been involved with video and electronic media since the mid-70s. Mid and one of the things that uh, drew me to the medium in the first place was that it was kind of a brave new frontier. It was the new revolution of television and uh, using portable video equipment, making your own videos. We thought that we could take over the media and be the eyes and ears of what really happened. Um, what they called media ecology, being responsible about what came out on the media. Now it just seems like, you know, you've got this great marriage of Google and YouTube where it's providing a great ser search engine and the opportunity to present all sorts of moving images and, and documentation of so many things and a great database at your disposal. But for some reason, it just seems so consumable. What does it what does it mean for the what does it mean for the okay. user community? Dude, get okay, your yeah. hand off me, kings. Two kings have gotten together. No, the king the king the king of search, the king of video have gotten together. We're gonna have it our way. It's just too there all the time. It's too pervasive. Okay. There's that nothing really special about iPhone. it anymore. That's my video transmitter. Now this is my video repeater. Basically it takes any video signal coming out of the iPhone and it boosts it, enhances it. We have more access than we could ever want. We have uh, it on our cell phones. We have it on our computers. On the uh, billboards as we're driving in our car. We see moving image video constantly. Just like the world is our, our, our. Today we have this thing called the mashup to me, which is really just another mode of, of uh, selling a product or putting out one idea to promote something else. It's, it's less about the critique and it's more about the promotion. This is international. As a member of the pictures generation, yes, I'm old enough now to be defined. Back when we were doing appropriation art and taking whatever we could, um, we, we would put them together and recontextualize them, reframe it, if you will, and uh, make something different, but always reflecting on where it came from and what it at one time was. The artist Richard Prince told me one time that a good artist is a liar and a thief. And, you know, as a member of that pictures generation, we all were for taking whatever we could. But back then, there wasn't really the equipment to do it. I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And we have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. For the last, really, you know, 40 years, I've been making work that uh, sometimes sort of performances, sometimes intimate, sometimes big sort of things with lots of projection. To say, you know, that you're a multimedia artist these days is really meaningless, because everyone is. We, we all are. For those of us who are interested in making art with video, 
it was very exciting to think of perhaps one day video coming into your home. No longer did you have to be in a gallery or a museum. You could actually make something and put it on, put it on cable television or satellite it up. It was kind of uh, just this incredibly exciting way of beating the system. To make money, I would work at night in clubs as a VJ or a video jockey. Uh, and what I would do is I would take discarded footage that, that uh, commercial houses would throw out, or my friends' videos, and I'd put them on two decks, and I'd start to play them to the live music and the bands and the club. Soon corporate masters started knocking on the door, and it was the beginning of MTV where they came to us video jockeys and said, hey, why don't you start making some of these and putting them on television? We think they can be on cable, which was kind of the internet of the 70s. This whole idea of corporization, of what I love to do, seemed not right. So uh, I continued in the art world. And I began to see that there needed to be more access for what I liked and wanted to do. Trying to get people to see work, uh, was so difficult. So I guess I'm trying to analyze, you know, what happened when everybody became a thief and a liar? What, what was the purpose? Was it the revolution or was it just to sell a product? You have just been copied, a common item. Yes. Well, why have you bothered to do that? Why not create something new? Uh, because it's easier to do. Well, isn't this sort of a joke, then, that you're playing on the public? Uh, no. It gives me something to do. You know when you have that epiphany, that, that moment where everything becomes just absolutely crystal clear? Well, that happened with me uh, when I went to see The Clock by the artist Christian Marclay. It was shown for 24 hours at LACMA's uh, Bing Theater. and. The piece is, a, is really about um, all of the movies that have been made during the history of cinema, but around the theme of time and the clock. And it always shows the clock in real time. And, uh, that anxiety kind of keeps uh, you as a viewer um, connected. Uh, you're, you're spending time um, being entertained, but at the same time, you're always conscious of the time uh, that you've just spent watching this thing. That tension colors the way you, uh, as a viewer, uh, experience the clock. And seeing this um, piece, I realized that so many of the films that were in this piece, I had actually seen. But here they were edited, just little teeny pieces, total thievery. You kept seeing these little glows in the theater as people checked their cell phones to make sure that they were completely synced up with the piece. It was all about the digital experience of time and how it connected and synced. And being in the theater and all recognizing it all at the same time. And what I found, which was very exciting, was that people had taken their cell phones into the theater and just like Christian, they in turn had stolen from him as they used their cell phones to record it and then put it on YouTube. This piece is very much about uh, the time passing, about mortality. I've called it before, you know, a, a giant memento mori. Um, and um, there's a lot of reference to, to life and death. All of these videos stockpiled on YouTube captured and abbreviated increments, like little deaths piling up. Where will they all go and what will become of them? <laughs>